consider the 90s one of the greatest series for television shows. She loves the 90s. It was a bit maybe you were 80s. What are you saying? I'm old. <laughs> for TV shows. I was, yeah, I was, I was the kind of Knight Rider and kind of all of that stuff. Blue Thunder and kind of, that was all my stuff, the A-Team. But yeah. For me, it was get up every Saturday morning, 6 a.m. until midday. It would be like Saved by the Bell, DuckTales. I was probably just coming in at 6 a.m. from some rave the night before, to be totally honest, at that point when you were yeah, still in your school uniform. So anyway, 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, carry on. 90s, one of the greatest It's years. not very politically correct, is it, for this era that we're in at the moment, but that's just me, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm a 70s kid. So one of the most iconic 90s TV shows. Also comment below what your favorite 90s or 80s clubs were that you were out until 6 a.m. Especially if you were in the north of England, around Hacienda time, around any there, we probably bumped into each other. Anyway, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. You would have heard of them. I love the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, actually. A bunch of teenage kids running around, stopping aliens, morphing, morphing. into incredible power oh. rangers. I mean, everyone wanted to be one. It was a very different looking show at the time. We hadn't really been exposed to that. It was a very, that kind of Japanese kind of vibe, very kind of high impact. And I think it was the first time we'd seen that kind of stuff on TV okay. before. The show took off. I remember seeing them in, like, I was obsessed with the magazines growing up. Tiger Beat, Teen Beat, Bop, 16, all those <laughs> names. No idea. So, but we are lucky enough to be chatting to David Yost today, who you will all know as Billy, the Blue Power Ranger. A lovely chat. We also interviewed him as part of Life After Flash when we were doing that, and we actually got to meet him in person. He was a really lovely guy, took the time to chat to us, had a really interesting story, and this is a great interview, so enjoy it. The fabulous David Yost that we met for Life After Flash has kindly joined us on the web show. Uh, David, how are you faring in these times? First of all, thank you for having me. And obviously it's a pleasure to see you again. Uh, obviously uh, the world is in a bit of an upheaval right now, at least where I live, the United States, probably more so than a lot of places. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm hanging in there as best I can. Uh, obviously I've never dealt with a pandemic uh, before. And so it's a learning curve as they say and uh i i uh, am a firm believer in wearing masks and doing everything that we're told to do uh to social distance and keep ourselves safe and so um you know it's definitely been a learning uh, experience and uh you know i think it teaches it's taught me a lot about myself and uh you got to be creative that's, <laughs> that's all I've been doing is creative in everything I do. Power Rangers and and your characters and you were a staple of so many childhoods growing up. Um, but what were the movies and TV shows that you grew up with that inspired you? For me, I grew up in the 70s. Uh, so I'm a 70s kid. And uh, that's when Star Wars came out. So that was like my first introduction, really, I think, to, to sci-fi. And so I was always kind of fascinated with Star Wars and I was a huge Darth Vader fan. Uh, I don't know what that says about me, but I just really uh, always resonated with him. And then as time went on, obviously I got to see amazing films like uh, Flash Gordon. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I became a big fan of Sam Jones and that movie always sticks in my head, even to this day. I just love watching it every time I get a chance to see it. So those are a couple of them. And then they're like superhero wise, I really uh, resonated with a cartoon that was called Underdog. And not too many people know about Underdog, but uh, I just, I don't know, I always took it to heart because he was not supposed to make it and he always made it. So uh, that's sort of three of my things there. What drew you to acting in the first place? I got my start as an actor in second grade. Uh, I was seven years old and I was lucky enough to be cast as Dopey in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs uh, for our school talent show, I guess it was. And so uh, I got to play Dopey and I was left on stage by myself uh, singing Hi Ho, Hi Ho, It's Off to Work We Go. Uh, and I just remember the entire school like laughing uh, at what I was doing. And I just thought, wow, this is, this is fun. I really, I really wanna do this. So from that moment, I did every school play possible uh, I took acting classes, uh, you know, I did everything I could. I went to university, as you guys say, college, that was what we say. And, uh, you know, I got a, a degree in communications and in theater and then moved to LA to be an actor. And uh, luckily enough, got Power Rangers right out of the gate. But, um, you know, it's just something that I always wanted to, to do my whole life uh, was to act. 
just because I enjoy it and it's a lot of fun. How hard was that decision for you to make that move to LA to pursue the dream? Because it does come with a lot of stigma. You know, you hear about people chasing their dreams and it seems like one of the most, the, one of the toughest careers to try and achieve success. It is, it's a very difficult career and you really have to think about what you're getting into. Uh, I try to tell that to a lot of people. Uh, just really make sure that you're committed to yourself and uh, to the craft because it's a, it is a roller coaster and it is up and down, but it wasn't a difficult decision for me. Um, it's just something again, since I was a kid, like that was always in my head. I put it in my head. I'm moving to LA. I'm going to be an actor. Uh, and, you know, and a lot of people laughed at me and just were worried about me at the same time. Uh, but I, I stuffed everything I could get into my car and I drove to LA. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have a place to live. And, uh, you know, I spent three days trying to find an apartment, found an apartment, and then I lived in an apartment for months without furniture and just slept on the floor. Uh, so, you know, but I was so committed. And then uh, I was uh, out pounding the pavement. I moved to L.A., ironically, uh, <laughs> two weeks after we had the L.A. riots. So LA was in a horrible uh, state. It was not a good time to move to Los Angeles, but that's that's when I chose to move here. And uh, it worked out for me. And I think uh, really it worked out because uh, I was focused and uh, I was driven and I wasn't gonna let anything stand in my way. And correct me if I'm wrong, cause you can never trust the internet. Um, it, when, after you moved, it wasn't actually that long before you got the role in Power Rangers? That is an internet thing that we can believe. Uh, that is true. Uh, so I only lived here for, I would say, three months. Uh, and then I got the first audition for uh, Power Rangers. And at the time, it wasn't called Power Rangers. It was called Phantoms. And I saw an open casting call. I just went to the open casting call with thousands of other people and just slowly go, uh, you know, it just kept getting more and more narrowed down. And it was like a two month audition process. So, you know, when it was all said and done, uh, I had been in LA for about five months. And you didn't get to pick your color? <laughs> no, we didn't get to pick our colors. Uh, they were already pre-assigned actually when we were auditioning. We didn't really know a lot about the superhero aspect of it, the spandex, the helmets. Uh, you know, they didn't really tell us that. They were more focused on the, the teenagers as they, as we were being cast as, uh, and the chemistry that we had together. And if we were um, either a martial artist, a gymnast, or a dancer, I was a gymnast, uh, I was a competitive gymnast a lot of my life growing up. But uh, so my gymnastics sort of helped get me the role. Um, but anyways, uh, we didn't get to choose our color. Uh, I originally had audition for the Red Ranger, but after three auditions for that character, uh, I knew the producers were gonna be going in a different direction. And so I asked the casting director, can I please read for the role of Billy? She said, no, we have all these other guys and you don't look like them and we're kind of going in that direction. And I said, please, I know I can do this. And she just said, I just don't think the producers are gonna be open to it. And so I uh, went into the bathroom at her uh, studio, whatever, and I wet my hair down and I borrowed somebody's glasses and I borrowed somebody's button up shirt and I came back and I said, please uh, let me read for the role of Billy. Billy's the nerd, that's why I was doing all those things. Uh, he's the intelligent one of the group. She said, okay, you know, I'll see what we can do. And they allowed me to audition. And then I had five more uh, auditions for the role of Billy after that. So the lesson in that is to be persistent. Uh, and if you, if you really uh, believe something in your heart, which I knew I could do this role, uh, uh, I knew I needed to act. It was what I was there to do. And so I had to prove and I had to do whatever I could to convince them that I could do it. And so, you know, I like to tell people this story because a lot of times people tell us no and we accept the no and we walk away. And, uh, you know, I just didn't want to accept the no. So obviously don't be crazy. <laughs> don't go, don't make people feel really uncomfortable. Uh, but, you know, if you really feel something in your heart, then you, you have to do everything in your power to make it happen. G going off my question list ever so slightly with this next one, but what was it about Billy that made you know that you should be playing that role? Again, I don't know. It, just, uh, it, it was just me wanting to be a working actor. I love acting and Billy certainly was a, a challenge for me because uh, he's super intellectual, 
Uh, and I, David, am not. Uh, I'm, I'm like an average student. I always got C's and Billy was always A plus student. And so, you know, even the audition scene, Billy had all these big words uh, that I didn't necessarily know what they meant. So I'd have to go back to my apartment. I would look things up in the dictionary and then I was trying to make them sound natural coming from David as Billy. Uh, and so, you know, it was, even though, uh, you know, it's a kid show and it's kind of cheesy and all that kind of stuff, it was, uh, it was, a, it was work for me, which I really enjoyed because uh, I got to create a character that was so uh, unlike who I really was in real life. Billy taught me a lot. And so I honestly, have been honored to get to play a role like that. What were your first impressions once you had started shooting? What were your first impressions of the script and the show? And did you know that it was going to be such a huge hit? I mean, the initial uh, impressions, I, I mean, I thought it was okay. I didn't really understand again. It's like this idea that hasn't ever been contrived or done before. So we're taking footage in the beginning. They're taking footage from a Japanese television show and they're cutting it in with American footage. And so just that concept, I was like, okay, I don't, I don't necessarily get it. And then they're talking about dinosaurs. They're saying we're morphing. And I was like, what, <laughs> what does all this stuff mean? So, uh, you know, I was just happy to show up to set. I can remember uh, one of the first days of filming, we filmed at a bowling alley and uh, I, uh, you know, I showed up and they're like, oh, you know, over here, your trailer's over here. And then we're going to take you to wardrobe and we're going to take you to makeup. And I was like, oh my God, my dream's coming true. This is, this is like, I'm really acting. Like I have a trailer and I get to go to wardrobe and I have to go to makeup. And so all that was a lot of fun. And then, you know, getting to become the character and getting to film uh, for, mo for the majority of us on the, on the cast, we had never really done too much TV or film. So it was such a training ground uh, for us to work in front of camera. And so all that beginning stuff was amazing and it, f it felt so much fun for all of us. And, uh, you know, we filmed the original pilot and then they cut it together <laughs> and they showed it to us and we were all kind of like, uh, okay, you know, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see how it goes. It, it really wasn't that great, but luckily enough in the United States, uh, we had a network called Fox and Fox picked it up and, uh, you know, they ordered 40 episodes right out of the gate. And so we went and we filmed 40 episodes. Almost all of it was filmed prior to it even airing. And so we had no real gauge of how successful the show was going to be. And then the show started airing in, I think it was at the very end of August, beginning of September. And we immediately shot to number one in the United States. And the phenomenon uh, began, as they say. Uh, and then the show started airing around the world and again, Worldwide, we started becoming the number one kids show uh, throughout the world. So that's such an honor. Uh, there's no way to gauge. There's no way any of us could have predicted that that would have happened uh, and that I am uh, <laughs> here all these years later, almost 30 years later. I'm still talking about it. I'm still uh, lucky enough to travel around the world and go to Comic Cons and meet people in their 20s and 30s that freak out when they see me or my co-stars from the original cast, uh, because we had such a, such a crazy uh, impact on their lives. Uh, and I think that's the most humbling thing about the whole experience is that it's just not something that I ever would have thought uh, that a character that I was playing would give people hope. Uh, you know, they, they would see that Billy was a nerd or Billy wore glasses. So it gave them confidence to feel okay about wearing glasses or, they saw that Billy had friends, so uh, because he's a nerd, he has friends. I'm a nerd, I can go out and make friends. Or, you know, it got them involved in gymnastics and martial arts and dancing and just uh, giving kids confidence. So that's such an honor to get to be part of a show that does that uh, and just continues to do that. Now a lot of our fans um, have kids of their own and they've introduced their kids to the original Power Rangers and their kids love it. So uh, it's just like this, trickle down effect that uh, has been awesome. When we interviewed you, you I, it's always stuck with me, the story you told where you said you were looking for a house and you went in and, and the, one of the bedrooms was just plastered with your character's posters and that was such a surreal experience. That still sticks, with, sticks in my mind, obviously. Uh, and it was actually a, uh, a, soap, a soap actress here in the United States 
uh, it was her house and so it was her kid and it was just like it was just interesting to walk into a bedroom and see Power Rangers posters but not only Power Rangers poster Blue Ranger stuff kind of like you know trickled around the room and I was like oh wow like I that's such a weird experience uh, but that, uh, obviously again awesome you know I uh, as part of the original cast, uh, which has been like, I guess the most popular cast, uh, you know, we still have all these um, action figures continually being made in our image and our likeness. And uh, it's, it's just interesting to, to see that it just keeps going and going and going. And uh, obviously, again, I, I'm just so humbled by it all and so honored. And so to get to walk in to be searching for a house in LA and walk into some kid's room and see that, you know, the show that I'm a part of is really affecting him. It's awesome. You touched on how it's impacted you, this amazing series that you were part of, but just how quickly it became popular and, a, you know, number one in the States. How was that for you? You know, you just moved to L.A. wanting to be an actor and then suddenly not only did you get a role, which a lot of people who moved to L.A. might not do, but then you become one of the most popular characters on television, seems overnight. How did you cope with that? again it's a learning curve because you know nobody can really prepare you for what fame is really like and so you, you lose a lot of your privacy uh in a lot of ways and so you know it, it starts off where you know you'll start going to the store and you'll see people looking at you or kind of whispering and you're like what's going on because you know for me i just was going to work every day and doing my job i kind of forgot that i air on tv and then it started clicking in my head, oh, they, they recognize me. And then, you know, as time goes on and the show becomes more popular, people are pushing their kids at us. <laughs> their kids are scared and crying and, you know, they're saying, take a picture with him, take a picture with him and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it just kind of, you have to learn how to navigate that. So, uh, you know, obviously when you uh, decide to be an actor in television and film, obviously, you know, that becoming famous is part of the deal. And so, you know, it, it teaches you that you just kind of have to always be a good person, which there's nothing wrong with that. So you just want to always make, at least I do, I just always want to make sure that when I do meet people uh, that I make them feel happy and that they, they get a moment. And I try never to say no if somebody asks to take a picture. I mean, there, are, there have been times where, you know, I don't feel I look my best and I'm like, I'd rather not, uh, but I always try to take pictures with people as best as I can. But uh, yeah, it, it's definitely a learning curve when the fame of the show started. Do you find it hard to be a role model? I don't know if it's hard, but again, uh, you know, being on a show like Power Rangers, uh, you're playing a superhero and you're playing a wholesome teen, I guess, and that's how people see you. And so I, don't necessarily get to express myself. I choose to be cautious about what I do, even like on a political level. I don't want to upset people. Uh, I don't know, it's such a complicated thing to, <laughs> to navigate this part of it too. Even just yesterday uh, on Twitter, uh, I had, <clears throat> they had some people, I don't know what's going on in the United States right now, but we have cops that are dressed just like civilians, and they're grabbing people off the street and throwing them into uh, unmarked cars and just speeding away with them. It's kidnapping. And so I wrote WTF. Uh, and, you know, you know, I said, this is a straight out kidnapping, whatever. And uh, one of my fans said, you know, they were genuinely <laughs> upset. They said, Power Rangers don't use WTF. So the F, you don't, you don't use that. And I was like, Oh, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> and so I should have said WTH, you know, so uh, just little things like that where, you know, it's like I'm constantly feeling like, oh, yeah, I kind of have to watch myself. And I do want to watch myself because, again, I have to remind myself, even though I did this show 30 years ago, and I think my fans are 25 to 35 years old and they might be able to handle it. Um, <clears throat> I have to remind myself that there's little kids. Uh, that are still watching the original and uh, they see things because they're connected in social media. And so I, I really want to make sure that, you know, I'm not doing anything to shock children. That's interesting because you, you're, because you have to be a role model as you, David, but you also have to yeah. still be Billy. So you've, you've got to be two role models almost. But yeah, it, it becomes complicated in, 
some ways, but you know, I just really just try to be myself and uh, try to watch my language. That's, that's what I have to do. Why do you, I mean, it's lasted years as we've spoken about, still loved. I was a big fan of it, still am growing up as well. Um, why do you feel like it is still so popular and loved? I think the thing that I'm most proud about uh, with the television show, at least Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, when we started this in 19, we filmed the original pilot in 1992, uh, didn't start airing till 93, but back then, uh, I was always proud that we had an ethnically diverse cast. And so I really felt like uh, everybody was represented for the most part in some way. And uh, again, uh, just me getting to play a nerd, kids that are intelligent, kids that are on the spectrum, they could relate to my character. So I just, I love that uh, we were so diverse, but we came together and we were the best of friends. And we really showed that we could all just get along. And I think it's interesting that, uh, you know, in the world, especially in my country, we're seeing so much crazy craziness with racism and all this stuff. But I'm, I'm glad it's coming to the surface so that we can get to uh, maybe living how the Power Rangers lived, uh, just, you know, in harmony. So uh, and just uh, support each other in terms of what we bring to the team. So Power Rangers, again, a great message from the show was uh, teamwork. Uh, and that it's not just about one person, it's about all of us working together. And so that's sort of, you know, what we have to do in the world as well as work as a team. And in addition to acting, you also are producing as well now. Um, was that an organic experience or organic, organic transition for you, a natural one? I think it was really natural and actually pretty easy for me. You know, again, being on Power Rangers, uh, we filmed that TV show very in a very fast paced environment uh, we filmed four episodes at one time so uh, we would call them clusters and so everything that would take place let's say in the command center for those four episodes we would film and then we would move to our gym and juice bar set and everything that we did in uh, everything that would take place in the four episodes in that set we would film and then we'd move to the school and then we'd go out onto location and stuff like that. So it was very fast paced and constantly doing wardrobe changes and uh, hair changes for the girls and uh, all that kind of stuff. So it makes you learn uh, a lot about production and just how things work and how precise things have to be. I mean, filming four episodes in the command center, knowing that every episode, sometimes you have three or four different wardrobe changes, uh, you know, you really have to keep your wits about yourself uh, to really make sure that uh, everything is happening as it is. And so when I moved into becoming a producer, I took so much of the knowledge that I had learned just from being an actor on Power Rangers and just really put it to play. And uh, I think it really helped me move up the ladder really quickly. Uh, I started like everybody else as a production assistant. Uh, but they, they saw how competent I was and how I could help them speed things up. And so uh, the company that I was working for at the time uh, just kind of moved me up real quick and it, it worked out in my favor. You had touched on being a gymnast and I have to say, I've always been a little envious because I, I went to level one and then quit when I was really young and I've always regretted it. And so whenever I hear that people have succeeded, I have a little bit of the green monster, but. Did that, I imagine that physically obviously helped you get the role in Power Rangers, but was that something that taught you the kind of mental strength that you needed for perhaps the move to LA and then working in such a fast paced environment? I mean, it's certainly possible. I've never thought about it in terms like that. Uh, obviously being a competitive gymnast, uh, I I don't know how my, my mom did the things that she did. She would work a full-time job uh, and then take me and my sister to gymnastics and on top of doing all the house chores and all that kind of stuff. She maybe taught me a lot about uh, the mental fortitude that I would need in life. But uh, being a gymnast, it's obviously a rigorous sport and challenged me mentally in a lot of ways. I, there was a lot of things about being a gymnast that scared me or terrified me, but it never you know, just swinging around bars and doing double backs and all this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, at first I'd be like, oh, I don't know if I can do this, but I'm kind of like a visual learner. And so my coaches would always be like, how did you do that? And I'd be like, I don't, I don't know. I just saw that person do it and, and I watched how they did it. And that's how I, that's how I would learn. So, uh, you know, that taught me a lot, uh, 
probably. So it's interesting to me that you pose that question because I had never really thought about it. And I, I imagine I did uh, get a lot of strength from being a gymnast and uh, just being dedicated to that sport. And that probably did uh, help me, you know, make these decisions that maybe some people wouldn't make, like moving from Iowa <laughs> to Los Angeles to be an actor. Um, you did in 2002, again, if I've understood this correctly, in 2002, you did the play Fallen Guardian Angels for charity. Um, is theatre something you want to do more of? Uh, it always seems to be the outlet that actors feel like they can really sink their teeth into because you're not stopping and starting and changing cameras all the time. No, I mean, I think it's so important and so crucial for any actor. I mean, if you take the craft seriously, you need to, to do theatre uh, if not do it, at least be reading plays all the time uh, because it teaches you so much. Uh, Los Angeles, unfortunately, I don't think is a great place to do theater. I don't think we have a lot of good theater here uh, but just because there's so many theaters and uh, you know they're all like 99 seats or smaller, 50 seat theaters. And uh, it's just difficult to get people, everybody's so caught up in the film and the television industry here. It's just difficult to get people in to see theater. Uh, but yeah, I would never be opposed to it. Uh, I always wished uh, that I had a better singing voice because, uh, I mean, Broadway would have been something that uh, that's something that I'm very envious of as actors that are able to go out on stage and just sing and uh, be part of those amazing productions that because I don't <laughs> because I don't sing, I don't get to even I don't even get to really try for those things. But uh, yeah, I mean, I would love to do theater at some point again, for sure. Come to London, we have plenty. Yes, you do, and but again, you guys are just as, you guys are better than Broadway, uh, but I, I love, I love theater in uh, London, for sure. Is there anything else uh, that you're working on at the moment, uh, or coming up, that you can share? Because of the coronavirus, it really has kind of changed uh, a lot of things that I thought I was gonna get to be doing in terms of web uh, a web series that was coming up, and, um, you know, auditioning has just been so weird. I've had auditions and then it's like, um, they're like, well, okay, that was great. Uh, we're kind of, <laughs> we're kind of just waiting to, you know, everybody just keeps thinking that this is going to be over and we're going to get to, to move on. Uh, and I, there are other countries like Canada, uh, they're moving forward, uh, just the United States. I don't know what's wrong with us. We can't get our heads screwed on straight to, to follow <laughs> the guidelines. So I think we're going to be delayed a lot longer. I kept hoping for the 20, January 2021, we could start maybe ramping up again. Uh, so we'll see. But yeah, I mean, there's definitely a couple of web series that uh, I'm sort of attached to and involved with, and hopefully they will come to fruition uh, rather quickly. Uh, other than that, I, I mean, I have had a few auditions for some films, and I'm just not really sure where where they stand at this point. Um, uh, but, uh, and then in terms of producing, uh, you know, it's sort of the same thing. I uh, have some ideas uh, that are written out and scripted and everything. And it's just a matter of really trying to, to get them sold, uh, which is what everybody is trying to do right now. So we'll see. <laughs> and what I've loved about talking to you is that your answers seem to not only answer the question, but you've had a really kind of lovely message or piece of advice for people, uh, as, you, as you say, but I'll ask this one anyway. Um, for people who were where you were in Iowa, dreaming of moving to LA to become an actor, what would your advice be for them? Getting into this industry is not easy. Uh, and you just have to really be committed to yourself. You have to really believe in yourself. You can't come, uh, don't become an actor because you want to be famous. Uh, I know that we're kind of in that world right now about influencers and social media and becoming famous, but that can't be your driving factor uh, because even that is so small. So uh, you become an actor because you love, you love to act, you love to create, you love to become characters, uh, you love to entertain, you love to tell stories. That's what you have to, to be within yourself. And so if that's the truth about yourself and that you believe in yourself wholeheartedly, I mean, from the time I was little, from the time I was on stage at seven years old, I knew it was like a instant flash in my head that that's, I have to do that. Uh, and there's nothing, you know, there's nothing that's really going to stop me from doing that. I, I have to give it my all. So, um, you know, you have to be, be willing to, to move to a city uh, that you 
might not know anybody in. Uh, Los Angeles, New York, Atlanta in the United States is becoming popular. Obviously, there's a lot going on in Canada. Uh, so, you know, you have to figure out where the place is that you're going to go and uh, just get rigorous and get uh, creative. Uh, I will say part of what helped me uh, get noticed uh, was my creativity. And so things are different now uh, in terms of getting in front of casting directors. But back in the day, I would sit in my apartment with no furniture. And every day that I would come home from work, I would uh, create envelopes. I would take uh, magazines and I would cut pictures out. I would make these amazing collages on these envelopes. And then I would mail my photo to the casting directors uh, just because I needed to stand out because they get hundreds of envelopes every day. So if they just see this one envelope that was a collage that somebody took the time to make, that made me stand out. No matter what, they're going to open that envelope. I believe that. And so they opened it and maybe I was right. Maybe I wasn't wrong. I definitely got auditions uh, and got called in. So that was me being creative and doing whatever I could to get noticed. And so, you know, you have to think of creative ways to, to make sure that you, you are being noticed and that people are going to know your name. So be committed, be rigorous, and be creative. Okay. <laughs> May, I feel like I should applaud that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on the web show. Really appreciate it. Um, hope you stay well and stay safe in these very strange times and bring on 2021. Let's go 2021. <laughs> Let's just get this year over with. But uh, same to you. And thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to see you. I think you're an amazing, talented woman and uh, just an honor to get to work with you and be interviewed by you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, obviously, wishing you all the best in the UK and just stay safe, happy and healthy. Okay. Thank you. And coffee in LA or London, whoever gets there first. Okay. Yeah, for sure. That is it for another week. That's Maybe. it. That was lots. I know. Maybe we'll morph into some what, dinosaur. What would we, if we had to, could we combine together into one super powered thing like, with ink and with, we'll morph this okay. one in, into the mix as well. She can, she can be the top half. What she's a bit, it's really hot today. So she's been sleeping on my lap the whole time. Trey. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, we have another interview next week. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all of the usual nonsense. Yeah. Cause we'll be having some subscriber only competitions and stuff coming up. So join our little life after club, subscribe. We will be continuing with these amazing interviews and so much more. Until next week, have a great week. Have a great week, people. Oh! <laughs>